and uh, as Lois says, my name is Dave Nellis and I was a Labour MP during the 1980s, subsequently a Socialist Party councillor on Coventry City Council uh, for 14 years. Um, and in March 2015, when Peter Francis, the former undercover officer who turned whistleblower, revealed that he knew of 10 MPs spied on by undercover officers whilst he was working uh, undercover in the 1990s. And in addition to that, as Lois has said, my own case was revealed 13 years earlier by the BBC documentary uh, True Spies. All 11 MPs so far named are Labour, all generally of the left. In fact, eight of the 11 were members of the Socialist Campaign Group. Six uh, are core participants. Uh, they include Lord Peter Hayne, Dame Joan Ruddock, Ken Livingston, Diane Abbott, Sharon Grant, the uh, widow of Bernie Grant, and myself. In addition, we know that Harriet Harman, Jack Straw, Dennis Skinner, Tony Benn, and Jeremy Corbyn were spied on by police. In fact, Jack Straw spoke in the Commons in 2015 and said it was possible that for three years, whilst he was Home Secretary, he was still being spied on by this police unit. Now, the presumption has been since 1966, though only codified some four years ago into law, of something called the Wilson Doctrine that the monitoring of MPs would require the specific approval of the Prime Minister of the day. That's now an explicit legal requirement under Section 26 of the 2016 Investigative Powers Act. So for the 11 MPs, there must have been the authority of Mrs Thatcher, in my case, and if it extended beyond 1997, the Prime Ministers of both main parties for these spying activities to take place. This clearly was never the policy of a rogue officer, but a matter of government policy, and the inquiry must provide answers on this. Now, secondly, I want to make a brief comment about other parts of the Labour movement too, because we know from the release of cabinet papers six years ago, papers from 1984, that monitoring of left-wing trade unionists took place. MI5 provided information to the then cabinet secretary, Lord Armstrong, which enabled him to provide a paper to Mrs. Thatcher's cabinet on senior union officials in the civil service union, the CPSA as it was then, the PCS as it is today. And that included the Assistant General Secretary John McCready, a supporter of the militant tendency. The aim of Lord Armstrong's paper was to show how the government could, and I quote, quietly purge left-wing trade unionists from the civil service. Now, had Dave Smith of the Blacklist Support Group, another core participant, been able to be with us today, he would have explained how, particularly in the construction industry, collusion between MI5, special branch, and building employers led to spying and blacklisting from employment on an industrial scale. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is an actual conspiracy, and it's not unfounded. In 2009, the Information Commissioner established that thousands of such files were held on workers, resulting in some people never working again. So to finish, this inquiry must show how, for at least 40 years, the police units under investigation, their commanders, and significantly high up the political tree, they disregarded the privacy, the personal and human rights of thousands of people, they sought to undermine legitimate justice campaigns or derail trade unions, environmental and social campaigns, and they spied on elected politicians. A blatant internal attack by a section of the state on what most people regard as parliamentary democracy. To end, questions of fundamental control and accountability of the police and intelligence services must be asked and answered over the next three years by this inquiry to prevent anything like this happening again.